Hey everyone, how you doing? Uh, tonight I thought I'd make a video. Um, I did a video yesterday I posted on uh, doing some bench testing and stuff like that. So um, I've got actually quite a bit of emails. And uh, when I first started rebuilding like the GM clusters and stuff like that, you, you could find 700 million uh, videos on how to change the bulbs and the stepper motors. But nobody really shows you how to bench test them. Um, you know, while you're repairing them, I looked everywhere and, uh, nobody would show you. So your options are, you know, put them together, uh, throw them back in the truck, see if they work. You know, uh, what I'm going to do first, I'll show you uh, how to rebuild them, which I really don't even want to get into because there's so many uh, videos out there. And obviously you can see both of these ones that I'm going to do tonight have uh, stuck needles. But what I am going to show you is how to use a regular, everyday scanner like uh, my Maxisys um, BT to actually bench test um, the cluster uh, so we can see what's going on with it uh, testing out all the lights and gauges and stuff like that and basically um, it all comes down to uh, well I guess we'll start here so I went ahead and uh, made a little list but first what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna flip the cluster over we, I won't even take this one apart yet. And uh, I labeled the back here. And uh, just to show you um, how the rows are set up. And uh, you can look online and find the connector views. But it's it's actually inverted. People don't realize that when you're plugging into the cluster. Um, A1 is on the right. Uh, B1's on the right. And then it goes uh, A12 to B12 on the left. So I'll show you what I did to make a pretty cool bench tester. Is um, obviously... Here's the VCI um, for my uh, Autel. Any scanner with bi-directional control should be able to do this. And I bought me, uh, actually I found this somewhere, I don't know, it was off a of GPS inside of a car, an adapter. And then we'll run down to the other end. And um, what I did was I have two, um, hold on, sorry, I wasn't... Uh, prepared I guess why I made this uh, so I have uh, just two roach clips on the end off of a cable I got and I bench test everything um, with my doctor meter uh, power supply but okay so what we have here is we have um, the D in my little uh, vehicle communication interface you can use like any one off your scanner whatever it comes with runs into this cable and uh, down here I'll show you which pins go to what um, we have pin number 16, bottom row, and uh, pin number 4 are positive and negative. So basically, my cable here comes directly. I cut it apart so I have all of my, my lines here, and I have a, the power from pin 16, and then I have um, the ground from pin 4 going into this little harness I made and on the other end I have some uh, three because we're going to need three uh, 12 volt uh, positive lines and then two negative lines so and they're all heat shrinked together so the positive side runs all the way up to the positive clip negative side the same to the negative clip so I got two grounds off my power supply um, three positive and then uh, I also have two coming out the other direction to power the um, scanner or the VCI for the scanner. So we have a positive and a negative here. Um, and I'm going to show you what we're after on the cluster. Here is um, the connector view. Uh, forgive my writing on the cluster of the pinout. You can find this online too. Not too hard to find. Um, but uh, we have, you know, A1 is the mill uh, lamp, uh, A2 is diesel, wait to start, washer fluid. And obviously, you can read through the list. But the only thing we're after is we're going to go with B9. We're going to go with uh, B11 for power. And then we're going to find uh, A11. And that's actually for the lighting, the dimmer lighting. But we're just going to run a straight 12 volts to it. There's no need to um, dim it when you're bench testing. So those three are going to be connected to power, and then we're going to go A12 is going to be ground, and B12 is going to be ground. And then um, on these, it's not like uh, these actually run off of a class 2 data line for all the gauges, so you're not going to be able to use um, 
I'll show you uh, here. I have, uh, I don't know where it's at, but I have an actual instrument panel uh, cluster tester or gauge tester that you can use. Here it is. I'll show you real quick. Um, you can use, I can use this to run up the speedometer and stuff like that, but it's actually a, a pretty cool kit for um, testing at the Sandy units or for certain clusters that run off resistance. But since these ones run off of a, a data line, it's not going to do you any good. So what you need to do is you need to get the protocol and get into that data line. So that's where, sorry, I just dropped that. That's where we come up with pin A6 which is a data line. So what I've done here, um, I know that the protocol for um, this one, these particular clusters is the J1850 and now that's going to be pin number two on your DLC connector. So what I've done here on the other end I've um, followed pin two and then I heat shrunk another connector here so we can actually communicate with um, the cluster through the uh, data connection and run some tests on it. So now what we're going to do, uh, before I take this cluster apart to rebuild it, we're going to grab this cluster here and we're going to grab our connectors and uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to find um, A6. So we're going to go A and that A6 is going to be our uh, 1850 um, data line. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you hook these up correct. So now we have the data line connected. So we are going to go and grab the positives, the three positives. So the three positives are going to go on B9, B11. So let's put those on here. We're going to count across. Sorry, one handed. One, two, three, four, five. We know B11 is the next to last because there's only 12. So we are going to connect B11, and then we are going to connect B9 to power. Uh, these pins actually came out of, out of a GM connector harness. Uh, I pulled them out of the plug, and then I heat shrunk them so they don't uh, touch each other. So we have B11, B9, and then the other one we are going to need is A11, which is 4. Your light, so it's going to be second to the last. Sorry, I'm focusing on this. So now we have A11, B11, B9 hooked up to power. So time to grab our ground side and our connector here. If I can uh, get, get it up here. And then the ground is just going to be simply A12 and B12. So the very last two pins are going to be your grounds. A12. And B12. Okay, so that's what our connection look like. I'll give you a better view of it. Uh, A12, B12 are ground, and then A11, B11 are power. Actually, I my eyes aren't working right tonight. Um, I'm gonna move the camera just for a second and make sure I have that actually connected on the right ones. Yes, B11. And then B9. You don't want to short out your cluster. So um, once again, I'll give you a quick little view. B9, B11, and uh, A11 are power. A12, B12 are ground. And A6 is our data line, which is the second pin on the DLC connector. And it's going to be the uh, J1850. And then pin 16 on the DLC connector is going to be the power for uh, your scanner or your VCI and then pin 4 and this is after, if you're looking at the connector. I don't want anybody burning out their scanner so that's on the actual connector view. So here will be your connector for your adapter. Very last one on the bottom row is going to be your... Sorry, I can't tell if my camera flipped over right there. Uh, very bottom one on the end is going to be your power second one is going to be your data line for the IPC and the fourth one is going to be your ground. So now that we got that we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to plug this all back together flip it over and turn on my power supply. Okay 
So I went ahead and just flipped it up. Uh, I set the cluster in my little stand here. So I got uh, my vehicle uh, communication interface um, plugged in. I got uh, my scanner. Let me see here. We're going to go back. I went into GM and I just picked a, for the Autel, um, I just picked a 2004 Silverado. Um, no VIN, nothing like that. All the clusters are the same. So I just went in and manually selected a vehicle because obviously we don't have the PCM. We're not going to be able to do an auto scan. So just manually select it. And uh, we're going to turn on the power supply now. And uh, we have the cluster live. No big deal. Um, now we're going to wait for the uh, Bluetooth link to be established. Okay, it's established. So now that we're in our scanner and we're just in GM, you know, I went into uh, Chevrolet, Silverado, two-wheel drive. All the clusters are the same. If you have a diesel, you can select a diesel. But we're going to go into the instrument panel cluster, uh, ECU information, and we should get a reading out of this cluster now. Yep. Okay, there's a part number, uh, data build, uh, 2004. And uh, the kind of cool part is now we can go into active tests. Um, and got the cluster on the bench, obviously. Um, we can try display test. And we can see, we can turn on all the lights. ABS lamp. Um, you can pretty much pick whatever you want once you're in the cluster. It's showing that the uh, PRN DL, uh, the, it's invalid because there's no uh, signal. But um, you should be able to turn on any features that you want. You could run the speedometers on, or up, down, gauges. Um, yeah, speedometer off. Let's see if we could turn some lamps on. Sorry, I'm here in the wrong settings. Uh, lamp test, display test. And there we go. We should be able to turn off all, turn on, turn off all the lights, including the back lights. Uh, this cluster has got uh, a lot of lights burned out. Uh, most of the gauges don't work at all, but you can um, go in and test uh, all the different features. You can turn the, um, I mean, even uh, parts of this truck doesn't, it's a two wheel drive that it came out of, not a four wheel drive, but you can uh, test the circuits, cruise control, and uh, it's just a good way to do it without having to um, uh, put it back in the truck, back and forth. You can communicate with it. You can turn the digital display on and off. Um, pretty much anything you need to do. Vehicle speed, uh, engage tests. You can, you can run through everything on the cluster after you build it on a bench just by communicating through the 1850 protocol. Um, this one here, I'm gonna go ahead and repair it. I might keep going with the video and uh, take it apart just to show you how I change the gauges out and stuff and then do a test when we actually have some good stepper motors so I can run them all and do a sweep test on everything. Um, like I said, I know the only one that's still working on this cluster is the speedometer. So I won't even try and run up a test, but after we're all done, get it rebuilt and put together. Um, then we'll go do what's called a sweep test in the module um, and uh, see if they work. So uh, give me a second here. I'll take it apart and I'll show you how we change out the bulbs and the steppers. Okay, so I went ahead and popped uh, the back cover off. Uh, pretty simple. You know, I'm not going to touch on the basics on these, but I've never seen one this bad, actually. I was kind of surprised you can't. Every stepper motor is froze up um, on this cluster to work. I mean, you can barely move them. That one actually works, but the rest of them, usually you see one or two that's bad, but not all of them. Uh, but uh, when I do my rebuilds, I like to use the new style. Um, I used to use the Jenkin motors, but um, these new ones, the black ones that are actually two piece and screwed together, actually work pretty well. I've never had one fail and uh, as compared to the older ones that I used to use, the um, 
the white ones. I still have a bunch of these in stock, but uh, I've had some pretty good luck with these, and they're actually good motors. Um, I get them on eBay. There's a guy in uh, San Jose that sells them. He always ships them out the same day to me, and uh, they're actually pretty affordable. So, um, yeah, I like to go with the, the black motors. What we're going to do now is just, um, real quick, just pull all the needles off. Um, some people like to mark them. I'm uh, really, to me, most of the time when the stepper motor stops, you're a little bit, uh, pretty close to an eighth of an inch on every one of them. Um, sometimes they go a little bit over, but it's not too big of a deal. Um, when you check them with your scanner, you can actually run it up and it'll tell you the value of where each gauge is at and you can make sure it's close, but it's not, it's not an exact science. They just rest usually about an eighth of an inch below the stopping point on these. Uh, the older clusters, you, you have to be, um, careful because the stepper motor spin all the way over but um yeah all you gotta do is just pop the uh the needles off one at a time and um i'm gonna go ahead and uh set my phone down real quick i have a little pick tool i put underneath here you just pry up on them you know you don't have to be too careful but try not to damage the top plate uh, let me see if i can get one just for somebody that might be watching this video that's never um, done it before, you can just slide underneath, just pull straight up, and they pop right off. That's all you gotta do. We're gonna take these off, take the top cover off, and then uh, pull the back panel off. Okay, all the needles are off the stepper motors. Um, I've watched a lot of these videos in the past, and people always pull this black cover off the front. You don't need to. Once you get the stepper motors off, just lift the top up, and uh, there's your board. Um, I did want to touch on a really common problem with these is these 510 ohm, uh, they're, I think they're the size is a 2512, 510 ohm SMD resistors. They tend to come loose. So if you're going to, um, take this apart and do some repairs on it, uh, I always put a little bit of flux on here and I'll re-solder the joints on these, even if they're working because they always seem never fails. You'll change all the stepper motors out and they... The customer will call you in six months from now and uh, saying every time they hit a bump, their cluster goes completely out or it'll go dead or you'll lose the DIC, uh, weird stuff like that. So uh, real quick, I'm going to put some power back to this board. We're going to see, I'm going to replace all these with LEDs. Uh, this guy wants red LEDs in his, so I'm going to go ahead and hook the power to it and we'll just uh, double check the rest of the bulbs that aren't included in the front lights and then we'll desolder um the stepper motors put the new ones in and uh give it a final test with our scanner all right so i went ahead and got the board powered back up and uh i'm gonna do a real quick display test and you can see um we're just gonna turn all lights on and uh all the leds are working but almost every uh, regular tungsten bulb in this cluster um is burned out so I'm gonna go ahead and replace them all this customer wants red LEDs um, if you do an LED upgrade the first thing I'm gonna do is pull the stepper motors out because it's so much easier to change the bulbs when the stepper motors are out but um, LED wise uh, I wouldn't anything above the black line here if you're gonna replace these ones just use the regular uh, uh, just a regular you know tungsten bulb don't use an led uh if you do make sure it's white because i think those uh shine through the cluster different colors anything below the white line is actually your backlights for your gauges and then um pay attention to if you're going to do an led upgrade uh i'm doing red on this internally resisted uh bulbs but they flip um for some reason gm they don't all have the positive and negative uh they flip i think this one's uh, positive on the bottom this one's positive on the top and LEDs only work in one direction so um, I'm gonna kill the power to this we'll flip it over and then uh, pull out the stepper motors and once they're out we'll change the bulbs all right um, I won't show you all of them but I'm just gonna show you real quick how I take these stepper motors out um, I use my uh, desoldering station it might get loud uh, I set it to uh, around 375 degrees and uh, the last thing you want to do is put a lot of heat on these boards so I just hit them real quick and that's all there is to it just 
one at a time. Just a second. And uh, that's all your, there is to it. Um, I've already done most of them on the board. But once you, um, let me see if I can focus here. Once you hit it with the, the desoldering tool, the stepper motor should actually just pop right out the back side. Uh, leave you with some pretty clean holes. Um, just makes it a lot nicer. You want to be very careful because there's... Um, these little pads that are soldered to the board. If you, uh, I've got my voltmeter um, beeping on me, but if you uh, put too much heat, you'll pull them right off the board and the cluster will never work right. Um, I get a lot of them where people try to do them themselves at home and then they want to bring them to me and have me repair them and I got to spend all kinds of time trying to fix the traces. But uh, yeah, that's all, all you got to do just real quick with some heat. You can use a solder sucker, same thing, but. Um, you can see this stepper motor is still in there. I hit it just as quick with uh, the desoldering tool and it just came out the bottom like that. So just go around real quick, pull the solder off. Um, you can use a solder sucker. If I had a, a tripod here, you'd think I would have learned by now, I'd show you. Uh, just real quick, uh, tap it, hit it with the solder sucker, you know, but um, I'm not gonna chance ruining a customer's uh, cluster here. So I'm just going to pull those stepper motors out, flip it over, show you real quick how to um, set the bulbs in and uh, test them all, make sure they're working. And then the main reason why I made this video at the very end, we'll do a, a real quick test, see if everything works um, using a scanner and the data line uh, so we don't have to put it back in the vehicle to, vehicle to test it. So uh, I'm going to get all these stepper motors out and uh, be right Okay, so I told myself I wasn't going to go crazy with this video that I was uh, not going to show how to um, rebuild the clusters because there's so many videos on it on uh, YouTube already. And I was just going to show you actually how to uh, test it with a scanner and uh, get into the cluster, check it for errors, um, do and sweep tests and stuff like that. So I'll just zip through the end of it. Uh, I went ahead and uh, pulled off all the lights uh, for the backlight. Um, on the last one, I'll just kind of show you if you don't know. Um, they're on these little blue perches. All you do is just tap the edges with your soldering iron and they pretty much fall off. Um, you can check the polarity with your test light or uh, your new bulb. Uh, this is an LED. You just trim the edges and you're just going to set it on there. Um, set it on there. Cross the perches left you know, until you figure out uh, positive or negative or use your uh, test light. I just usually zip through them. Most of them, the positives on the bottom, but there's a few that are flipped over. So uh, I'm going to grab my soldering iron, solder that on real quick. And then we are going to touch up the edges of these resistors up here. And I'm going to check uh, one over here uh, that goes bad pretty often. But I'll just uh, run a little bit of solder on the edge uh, to make sure those are nice. Um, put this in. I'll flip it over, show you how to solder the... Uh, step promoters back in once you take them out and then we'll uh finally do the test the whole point of this video was to be able to do a sweep test and a light test with the scanner um just to see if your repairs are okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get this last bulb in um touch up the resistors and uh we'll start putting the steppers in okay sorry if i'm rushing through this one it's almost midnight at my house and i still have two more of these to do tonight before i can go to sleep um so I went ahead and put the stepper motors in. You can see now we have uh, red backlights all over, uh, touched up some of the uh, resistors that are known to come off. Stepper motors on the back side. We just do a real quick uh, soldering. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, just solder them. I always use a 0.4 millimeter um, 6337 solder. Uh, Takes almost no heat at all. Lays down real nice. So you can solder them all in in just a couple seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and put the front cover on, put the back cover on. We'll rehook up the data line and uh, see if we can uh, bench test the completed rebuilt cluster. Okay, so now we have a completely repaired cluster um, with a nice red glow in the back instead of the factory glow. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the Autel scanner. And the first thing I'm going to do is a lamp test. Um, and then you just hit display test. We still have our VCI hook to it. Now, as soon as I hit um, the on button, we should get all the lights in the cluster. 
to come on. Okay, so now we have all the lights working, uh, trailer tow. Uh, we can back out. And then um, we're going to go into IPC gauge test. And now that, um, come on now. Okay, now that we have all the steppers, they should do a sweep when I hit the on button. And uh, we'll try it out. And there you go. All your stepper motors are up and working. Um, we just tested all the lights and all the controls. I can actually go through. There's uh, really no reason to, but you can actually go through the DIC and uh, odometer test. So if it's um, if it's not coming on, you could thumb through the different options on this one. But I can just do that by hand. And I know it's in Spanish. The customer uh, brought me this one, told me that he wanted it left in uh, Spanish. So. Um, that's all there is to it um, by hooking up the data line off of your uh, communication on uh, the connector I showed you, A6, you can actually do a bench test with no special equipment, just your everyday scanner that has bi-directional controls. It doesn't have to be an Autel, that just happens to be what I use. And um, see where you're at. And you can actually go into um, the live data and uh, it'll tell you, you know, you can change it up to about 50%. Uh, I do see I put the oil pressure needle on uh, off a little bit on this one, so I'm going to pop the cover and fix that. But, um, yeah, you can actually go in. I was trying it before I uh, came back on to show you guys because it's been a while since I've actually had to test one. But um, you can go in there and set it to 50%, and the uh, fuel gauge should go up to 50%, or um, the tack, you can set it at a certain RPM. But I just do a quick sweep test. Um, just to make sure that they work and you know they should go end to end and work smooth and if they do you're good to go so if you have any questions uh let me know and again thanks for watching i uh, appreciate you guys